What's up, Myth Guardians? Leap Daniel here. So today, I thought I'd talk about what I hate about Mythgard. Don't get me wrong, Mythgard's a great game, probably the best CCG I've played, but no game is perfect. So we're going to be airing all the dirty laundry in this one, taking a look at all the game's flaws, and perhaps get some insight into how the game could improve. I have to say, I did have a hard time coming up with 10 of these, because I do think the game is quite good. Some of them are not things that bother me now, but more so problems that I have with the new player experience. So if you're on the fence, please don't let this deter you from trying the game. It's really quite good. With that said, let's get into it. That's right, you saw it in the thumbnail, that awful dagger through the skull you get every time you lose a game. Honestly, it gives me a headache just looking at it. Just for comparison to see how bad this is, I want you to look at the losing screen for two other digital card games. Hearthstone's losing screen is quite similar to their winning screen. It's still a parade, but it's getting rained on, the trumpets are broken, it's like a failed celebration. The attitude is, oh well, your parade got rained on, better luck next time, try again. MTGA just has a generic defeat screen. It's darker in tone than Hearthstone, but still nowhere near as dark as a dagger through the skull. I think it's fine for video games to have violent, dark imagery that really punishes you when you lose, but it's not fine for a CCG. You know why? Because CCGs have a very short game loop. You play a game, you win or lose, you repeat. So every time you lose, you're getting punished with that awful implication of getting your head stabbed. And CCGs don't just have a short loop, they're also probabilistic which means you're guaranteed to lose some of the time. So you're being punished for something that isn't even fully within your control. That feels terrible. Even the most skilled competitive players are being matched with people around their skill level on ladder, so they'll also lose about 50% of the time. There's really no escaping it. I really think that this symbol might subconsciously deter people from playing on ladder because when they play against AI, they always win and never have to look at it. Now, you might be watching this and thinking, Leap Daniel, that's just aesthetics. That has nothing to do with gameplay. Don't make such a big deal about it. And you're right, it's just aesthetics. But I think you care more about aesthetics than you realize. Most video games are reducible to a bunch of numbers in a spreadsheet. But even for your favorite video game, with the best gameplay in the world, if they stripped away all the textures and graphics and just let you play spreadsheet.game, I think you would not find that to be a pleasant experience. And Rhino Games definitely cares about aesthetics. They have some of the best art on their cards. So I implore them, please, change this losing screen to something a little more palatable. Unfortunately, there just aren't enough Myth Guardians at the moment. Even in standard ladder, the wait times are about a minute. I haven't played Arena or 2v2 in a long time, but last I checked, the wait times were way worse in those modes. And when you do find someone, you've got a decent chance of them being a familiar name. This can also create a vicious cycle, where a disproportionate number of the people willing to ladder are seasoned veterans, and so this scares away any newcomers, increasing the ratio of veterans even more and making ladder all the more scary to newbies. This is likely caused by a lack of marketing. Mythgard is such a great game, if only people knew it existed. They had like one decent trailer earlier in the game's beta. Compare that to Hearthstone, which gets all kinds of exciting posters and a cinematic trailer for every expansion, sometimes even a song. I can piece together from the cards that the Rings of Immortality expansion is about some kind of sports competition analogous to the Olympic Games, but I shouldn't have to piece that together. There should be some kind of cinematic trailer with an announcer detailing all the unusual and deadly athletic feats that they perform in the fantastical world of Mythgard. I get that it's hard, since they're a small indie company, but really, marketing as well as Hearthstone does is pretty much mandatory, since they're trying to break into that market that Hearthstone already has an established hold of. At the very least, they could pay some well-established gamers to try the game out and post a video of it. Maybe a Hearthstone YouTuber such as Kriparian, or even someone who's famous but hasn't explored the card game space before. 
one of the keys to the success of Hearthstone was that they really streamlined the way the card game is played. Whereas Yu-Gi-Oh! and MTG have things like trap cards and instants that require the game to constantly pause and check for your reaction, Hearthstone lets you proceed with your turn uninterrupted. The only form of disruption Hearthstone really has is secrets, but those are all handled automatically by the computer. I think this is the smart way to incorporate disruptive strategies into a digital card game. It takes full advantage of the digital medium and doesn't stop you from playing the game during your own turn. Mythgard has been a lot better in this regard than many of their competitors, with cards like Decoy, Defy Death, and Quicksand Hourglass triggering automatically during the opponent's turn. But they aren't quite perfect. For example, cards like Imperative Bell and the Oak of Dodona have actions that take place when your minion dies, which often occurs during your opponent's turn. Also, Awaken effects trigger whenever a minion is created, not just played from the hand. This means that whenever one of your minions is created by an effect during your opponent's turn, such as via a slain hopeless necromantic, you'll be making any choices associated with its Awaken effect during your opponent's turn. For Rhino Games to fix this, I would suggest they change their Awaken mechanic to only trigger when played from the hand. Furthermore, I would suggest they completely change Imperative Bell and make all Demise effects choiceless. This is another aesthetic one. I actually love the graphics that they have, things like the chain from the stretcher or the spikes from Ice Spike. It makes it feel like you're not just dealing two damage and stunning, you're actually impaling the enemy minion with ice magic. But there aren't enough of these, and some of them are very generic, like Quicksand Hourglass's light when it's triggered doesn't seem to me to have anything to do with sand or time per se. Again, I know it's probably difficult for Rhino games with limited resources, but the more graphics like those that you can incorporate in your game, the more it will sell me on the fantasy underlying the card battle experience. I absolutely love the world building in Mythgard, and reading the lore on their cards is a real treat. But I think the story that they tell in story mode is a little bit lame and forced. Granted, we're only seeing one chapter of it, but that chapter seems very generic. Percy, who is obviously a modernized version of Persephone, leaves Hades and assembles a ragtag team from different factions, joining forces with a Norse wolf, a Parsian angel, and perhaps soon a persecuted Vedma witch. Very cliche, and all the enemy encounters seem kind of forced, like the wolf attacked simply because he wasn't thinking or those random attacks from the Gamayuns for stepping on sacred ground at Delphi. I don't know, it just seems a little cheesy to me. But maybe I'm being overly entitled. A lot of card games don't even have a story mode, and when they do, they're almost all cheesy. So I wouldn't hold this one against them too much. Plus, we've only seen one chapter. It might get better as we go. Okay, this one is just about the new player experience, but Turn of Seasons is just the second path you unlock, so I would expect it to be kind of easy and simple, since new players will be using it when first experimenting with different sorts of decks. But no, it rotates between four seasons, requiring you to think turns ahead. That depth and complexity is something I enjoy now, as someone who's well acquainted with the game, but I think it's kind of overly punishing to spring something like that on a new player. I know I was caught off guard several times by the fragility effect of Winter, planning for a trade that turn that was no longer optimal. Deck building is very easy with Turn of Seasons, but you have to keep in mind that they aren't just new deck builders, they're new players too. There's a lot of things to track at once in a game of Mythgard, and adding seasons on top of that can be overwhelming. Disc of Circadia is the very last path unlocked, so I can't be too upset at how confusing it is. But the wording is very strange. You start the game at night, and the text for night says, Divination 2, draw a card. So you would think that when you use a hero power, you would get to draw, right? Nope, that's what happens when you switch to night. So actually, it's what happens during the day. I think they should alter the text of Disc of Circadia so that it clarifies the distinction between switching day and night, and the continuous effects that are actually during day and night. 
maybe have sunrise and sunset sections for what happens during the change. Not much can be done about this one. I checked the average word count of the paths, and if you don't count numbers or the side explanations of keywords, it's 48 words. I think that's longer than any card. Reincarnation is the only one that comes close at 45 words. And paths are a particularly integral part of the game, so for new players who aren't that invested yet, it's a big ask to make them read it all and keep up with it. Again, I don't expect any change on this, and now as a veteran player I actually enjoy the complexity of paths, but it's somewhat of an obstacle for newbies. This is a small one, and also mostly just a new player experience thing, but I find the artifact layout confusing. The opponent's artifacts line up right to left, but in order to keep the artifacts from obscuring your hand, your own artifacts have to get bunched up together in the corner. The ordering of this bunch is far from obvious. You have to pay attention to learn it, and there's no part of the tutorial that ever teaches it to you. Combine this with the fact that many artifacts have stacking, and it can be quite difficult to learn how the artifact mechanic actually works. I know many people are feeling like the game is losing its freshness, as it's been so long since the game started in beta until its first expansion, which is only now coming out behind schedule. I agree it does kind of suck, especially for a lot of the really veteran players that have been around since the beginning. Personally, I've found that there's actually kind of a silver lining to the weight. I can use it to build up my core collection, but I only started playing the game in February, so I can see how longtime vets might feel that it's gotten a bit stale. But the good news is, that won't be a problem for long with the upcoming Rings of Immortality expansion. Whew! Like I said, I had a really hard time coming up with that list. I think with all of those faults, Mythgard is still a wonderful game. Do you agree with the faults I mentioned? Are there any others that you think I missed that really bug you about Mythgard? Let me know down in the comments. And thanks for watching!